Hi, the Pragmatic Luther back again. Uh, as you know, I advocate making as much of your own tooling as possible. And today, I'm going to get right into that, right up to my ears. Today, I'm going to start making tools so that I can make tools. Uh, I have found a problem with my fingerboard radiusing jig, and I'm going to rebuild the whole thing. I didn't think I'd ever see the day when I'd have to rebuild this jig. This thing was absolute hell to get it uh, together and to get it to function correctly. But I've found that I have a problem with it. The problem is that this slider right here, which carries the fingerboard while it's being cut, I'll just slip a fingerboard in there so that you can see that. This carries that fingerboard back and forth while a router in here arches the top of it. What I've discovered over the last three fingerboards I made is that as this thing reaches its maximum position, this end over here, my left end, tends to tilt down because this drawer slide is not rigid enough. And from about the beginning of the second fret all the way back to the nut, it drops back about eight thousandths of an inch. It gets thinner. And I just can't have that. Um, that's it, not a workable system anymore. So I tried to think about different ways I could repair this or you know, increase the rigidity of this sliding table. And what it amounts to is these drawer slides might be all right for a lot of things, but for this application, they are nothing but, if you'll excuse my expression, excrement. So I'm going to rebuild the whole thing. The new design that I have for this is such that uh, little or none of what's already here is transferable. So that means that I have to rebuild this uh, arched, trunnion here so to speak and I built this so long ago I've forgotten how in hell I even did this so I had to reinvent that wheel and it's just as well uh, I'm going to do this probably in wood again uh, but I'm going to do this as precisely as I absolutely can I'm going to incorporate some techniques that I haven't before and try and make sure that when I get done with this thing, it's the last time I got to do it because this is, this thing was hell. Um, at any rate, so I have to make these trunnions. In order to make the trunnions, I've got to make additional tools to make them. So, uh, just to give you an idea, I don't work absolutely blind. I only work half blind. And here's a sketch of the first device I have to make. I'm going to make a router jig that will allow me uh, to cut some arcs. And those arcs will be in the various radii that I need them. So here's a sketch for that piece of the project. And it's going to be done in polycarbonate. And I've got this just rough cut out. And we'll start fabricating from here. So my first step is uh, I've got a piece of polycarbonate cut out here, parallel edges. And on this end, I've already drilled it uh, to mount to the router base piece. And now I'm going to mill a slot down the length of this thing. My setup here is a little unconventional because I've got wood rails set in here. Uh, a machinist would probably kill me for that. But this is light duty stuff, so I'll do it. And uh, when I get to the pearly gates, if they tell me I'm going to go to hell because I I milled using wood parallels. Well, I'll save a place for my brother there. That's all I can say. So here we go. Let's let's mill a little bit of this thing. Interesting lesson learned here. Uh, having this trapped with, between these rabbited pieces of wood in the mill vise was a decent idea, and the clamps were to make sure everything stayed rigid. But as you mill this groove, this nice long groove, the mill vise itself actually pushes in and it causes it to lose a little bit of grip. So we had a little bit of slippage by the time we got to the end. 
if I'd have tried to do this same kind of setup with a piece of aluminum or you'd never try it with steel but even with a piece of aluminum this wouldn't have worked at all um, the proper way to do this would have been to remove the mill vise and put this piece up on jacks and uh, or blocking some sort of padding packing and bolt it down zero it up so that you're traveling parallel to the edge and mill it that way holding it down with strap clamps but what the hell we got away with it this time so the next thing that I have to make is the router base itself which will be mostly circular but then it's going to have a straight piece coming off here to attach that other chunk to in the previous section in order to make this i could do this with a bandsaw i guess and you know you can you could do it this accurate enough but uh i want to do it with this equipment because i have it and i enjoy using it there would be other ways if you were trying to do this in your shop without this equipment you certainly could do it um, what I have here to do the work is a rotary table for those of you that might not be familiar a rotary table is a machine table that can rotate and this one is a real nice one because it'll rotate 360 degrees and keep going as opposed to uh, 259 or whatever and have to go back and I, I like this uh, a Facebook friend and a customer at, Lud at Ledoux Guitars gave me this. Um, real nice guy. I can't mention names because I don't have his permission, but I want to thank him for that nonetheless. So what I have here is the rotary table is bolted down to my mill machine table. And it has to be centered up. I've got to get the center of the mill and the center of the table perfectly concentric. And that's not hard to do. Uh, a long time ago, I made this cylinder right here uh, on the lathe that fits the center of this table perfectly. And it's really very simple. By putting an edge finder in here, see there's my edge finder, I've just set it off center. Edge finders can also find centers, of course. And by getting as close as I can and moving up and down with that until it slides into that precise hole, um, I can actually, excuse my hand here, um, I can feel when this thing is centered. Now you might think that's inaccurate, but a machinist actually told me that this method, first of all, being way more accurate than I need for what I'm doing, but as you move your X and Y axis to get this thing evened up, this machinist told me that you can feel a difference right there with your finger and your thumb. You can feel that just a tenth you can do it so i'm centered up way more accurately than i need to be now that that's done uh, this the edge finder will be taken out uh, the this plug here the centering plug will be removed and this will be bolted down i'm going to drill a half inch hole here at the center of this and that will be centered on there as well and this will be bolted down, suspended up above the table so that milling cutters don't hit the table and so on. And I'll be able to fabricate the outside of this, the outside circle. I will mill an inside circle, probably an inch and a half, maybe two inches in diameter. And then we'll stop milling here and here and come out straight so that we can screw this to the other section that I showed you in the previous video. But that's the end of it for today because I'm going to go in the house and eat my daily bale of hay. All right, I've set up my rotary table here and uh, I've put my, <clears throat> my acrylic disc on it, I've mounted it. What I did first was I drilled the mounting holes for the router base. I literally used the router base to spot those holes on there. And I lined that up by drilling a half inch hole in the center of this first and then putting an edge finder right into the half inch collet in the router, slipping that over this center hole and then I could hold everything still and line all that up. Uh, so then I raised the material off of the table, the rotary table, by just means of this quarter inch packing here and unconventional as it may seem, um, I have used pieces of wood, I made uh, T-slot bolts, if you will, um, out of wood, so that I could just take some screws and go right down through those pre-drilled holes 
and hold all of this down. These pull up on the T-slot material and hold it reasonably rigid. So that's all there is to the setup, but now it's a matter of, we're gonna route around that, excuse me, mill around that um, until we eliminate the waste and then we'll have to take off the straight sections. So here's my completed router base. It's drilled. I've opened up the center, of course, so that a large bit can pass through if need be. And I just finished carefully aligning with uh, this portion here. What do you call it? Call it the beam, okay? Um, just very carefully line those up with uh, parallels and straight edges and so on. And spotted these holes. These will be drilled and tapped for a 1032 and we'll put those together and make one piece out. The next part that I have to make is this piece shown in this sketch. And this is just a slider that will engage with this groove in the acrylic arm here. And uh, it's just a lug that stands up. And I guess in woodworker's terms, you'd call that a rabbit on this side and a rabbit on this side. It's got two holes drilled in it, one for the centering pin, and one will be a locking knob. Pretty simple thing to do. So I didn't uh, film all of this because I think sometimes watching milling machines whirl is just kind of boring. But here's the piece set up, and you can see I've got the center, uh, the center section milled. And this lower section right here is going to have to be thinned down from the back side a little bit to make this work out. But my next step will be to drill these. So it's not that tough to do. And I got to say once again, thanks to a digital readout, when you've got a milling machine that's uh, got as much play in it as something like this does, it makes life a whole lot easier. All said and done, I've got to fly cut this down about 75 thousandths of an inch below this surface. Uh, not that big a deal, but it's going to take a little time because fine cuts, fine cuts. Well, I got this last piece completed, um, and it worked out very well. It slips right through here pretty well, and it has a hardened dowel pin in it uh, to act as its center. And the dowel pin is also adjustable by means of a set screw back here, so you can change its depth. And it's locked in position by means of a quarter 20 locking device here made specifically for my router but could be adapted to others i'm sure this thing will allow me to do a radius from somewhere around seven or eight inches up to uh, 20 and a half with a quarter inch router bit mounted in the router so this is only the first step toward making another tool particularly as i mentioned before my uh, fingerboard radiusing jig but it just occurred to me that you know for woodworkers this might be something that uh, you might enjoy making up and you could use for a lot of different purposes yourself. So there you go. See you next time as we progress through making the rest of the tools.